Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. February 1, 2021, the big boys edition. And we begin with that story of there are potential merger talks between Exxon and Chevron as the CEOs have been chit-chatting. They spoke about combining the oil giants after the pandemic shook the world last year, testing the waters for what could be the largest corporate merger ever. The discussions were described as preliminary and are not ongoing but could come back in the future. Such a deal would unite the two largest descendants of John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil Monopoly, which was broken up by U.S. regulators in 1911 and helped reshape the oil industry. Uh, That, uh, needless to say, would be a huge deal, and you can only imagine the compliance challenges and implications in addition to the regulatory approval from the antitrust. Next up, from the Wall Street Journal, Mingi Sun reporting in the Risk and Compliance Journal. Hallelujah, you might say, as Facebook has hired its first CCO. It's pretty amazing that they've never had a CCO. Nevertheless, uh, after facing a withering scrutiny and criticism and an upcoming antitrust lawsuit which could break up the company, Facebook has hired its first chief compliance officer. Henry Monitz has been the chief compliance officer and chief audit executive at the media giant Viacom CBS and will join Facebook on February 11 to lead the company's global compliance team. As I indicated, he'll be the first person to uh, hold a compliance uh, title, chief compliance title at Facebook. In an untoward note to start with, he will report to Facebook's general counsel, although he will report to a board committee overseeing audit and risk. Uh, Note, that they do not have a compliance council on the Facebook board. So it's unclear whether he's being set up for failure or this will actually uh, be a positive note and Facebook will do the right thing. Although given their culture and their history, you have to wonder uh, whether or not the first CEO is actually going to uh, be able to make a, a reasonable change in the culture and put compliance policies and procedures, effective compliance policies and procedures in place. Next up, GameStop. Uh, I'm going to write about GameStop all week, so I hope you will check that out on the FCPA Compliance and Ethics blog. But uh, <clears throat> Stephen Perlstein in the Washington Post says that the GameStop mania exposes the SEC's failure as a regulator. I would also add that um, given the Trump's evisceration of the SEC, particularly with uh, his selections for the um, – Board of the SEC, or rather commissioners, you can see that uh, uh, any regulation coming out of the Trump administration would be uh, not seen or approved by the administration. So it's not really no surprise they're not ready here. But uh, th- what's the SEC going to do? Who are their interests? Are they there to protect investors? If so, what, if so, what investors? Are they the, the retail investors or the big boys? Or is the SEC going to look at something else? This is a pump and dump scheme. Are the uh, Reddit-speaking traders who drove up the stock price and squeezed out the shorts? What about them? Lots of questions, but you have to wonder, where was the SEC? And finally, from the Financial Times, the trial of uh, Carlos Goshen Lieutenant paints a picture of a dictatorial leader and a toxic workplace. Interestingly, it was a fraudulent travel expense that started the downfall of Goshen. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.